Welcome along guys. Well, unfortunately, my two weeks with the Super Duke car has come to an end. It's time to say goodbye. Mwah. So I'm going to bring you the good and the bad points with the KTM 1290R. Should we start with the good or should we start with the bad? I, I don't want to leave on a sour note with the video and I don't want to start it on a downer. So I think we'll mix them up. We'll mix up the good and the bad. There is more, go there is more good than bad with this bike. That is absolutely certain. So the good things, let's start on a high. Let's start with the good things. The great thing about this is the torque and the power. It, it makes the bike absolutely effortless to ride. Just effortless to ride. And that, that's what I really like about it. And that's what's really gelled with me. You can cruise this bike. When you go out on this bike, you're not looking for thrills all the time. This can be a cruiser and it can give you the thrills i can go out and just enjoy the scenery on this without thinking oh let's give it some beans let's go fast you can cruise on this which i love and that is a big requirement for me for a motor for a road bike 175 brake horsepower 140 new meters of torque i mean what, what isn't there to love other great points it's all the electronics all the little, not, not just the basics like the traction control, the blipper, all the little things you get with this bike, like the keyless ignition. I really like keyless ignition. I know some people aren't sure about it. I love it. I hate having to worry about where's my key in the pocket, sorted. The other little things like the tyre pressure indicators, the oil temperature, the cruise control. Well, even the cruise control is sort of almost a standard feature now, but it's like the other little things over and above those sort of standard fitment features nowadays. Oh, cut in the corner. Like the illuminated switch gear. Little things like that, which just do that little bit extra, that little bit over and above what other manufacturers are giving you. The weather is decidedly dodgy today, so we may get a chance to test out that. <laughs> traction control because the electronics I mean the other electronics the main electronics like the clipper the quick shifter all that I have been through these in a bit of detail video the fuel gauge it's great to have one but it does <laughs> swap and change around if you look at the the fuel range sometimes it'll say you got 100 miles you, you check two minutes later it says you've got 50 miles and it's pissing down! Pish pat paddle bum. I turned it on the other day, I've been out for a ride, I was in the middle of nowhere. I stopped for a quick break, I turned it on, and it said I was in the red. I had 20 miles to go. It was a quarter of a tank before I turned it off. I was like, shit! Started riding. 30 seconds later, I had a quarter of a tank again. Do not rely 100% on the fuel gauge. Think of it as a, a general idea of how much fuel you've got. Another slight niggle, and this is probably only because I came off the Tuono, but the front brake is still a little bit wooden in comparison with the Aprilia M50 setups. I don't know why, I'm thinking perhaps it's the compound of brake pads. Perhaps the Aprilia has got a racing compound, so you've got a lot more feel, but the actual wear of the pads will be much higher, where if they've gone for a harder compound, or brake pad in this, just for a bit of long longevity. 
I love the fact that it's a supermoto style to this bike. I love supermotos. I've got a 701, as regular subscribers will know. I love the way this feels like a big, brutey supermoto. It feels light, it feels agile. You can really dance this about. This is a light bike. This is, un this is dry. This is 190 kilos, 185 kilos. It's just over 200 kilos wet. So it's not a heavy bike. When you think the Hypermotard is about the same weight as this, then that gives it some perspective as exactly how light this is for a 1300cc bike. Some would argue with piston holes the side, size of Dulux tins, <laughs> it's no wonder it's light. <laughs> Another thing I was surprised with with this bike is the fuel consumption. I was expecting it to be horrendous. 1300cc, a happy, eager right hand, and I thought the fuel is going to be, it's going to cost me a fortune two weeks on this bike. And it really hasn't. The fuel efficiency is one of the things KTM have concentrated on, and this bike is 10% more fuel efficient than last year's model. They've got more power, more torque, and less fuel. That takes some doing. Oh, what else about this bike do you need to know? The throttle's got a little bit of a waggle on it. Toronto didn't have that, but it's it's not it's it's fine. I'm being picky. I'm being picky. What else can I pick at? With my unreasonable pickiness. After getting off those V4 Aprilias, it did feel a tiny bit agricultural, like the vibe, the big V-twin, compared to the the super smooth V4s. You know, it, it is a 1300cc V-twin. It's got some little vibes. You can tell by the camera, it, it shakes around a little bit. There's a few vibrations from this. It's not massive though, and it doesn't bother me, but I know other people who've ridden these. If you're used to a, st a straight cylinder sports bike, you may not like this. You may not like this. If you ride this, you need to give it time to to settle into it because it's very different from a straight four or a four cylinder engine. It's very different. Ride it as you would a big single. Use the low down torque, don't just rev it. That is where this bike's strengths lie, in its torque, in its low down power. Well, as you know guys, in the interests of science and moving, following on from the uh, Aprilia, uh, test. We need to test the luggage space. There's only one way to do this nowadays, and that is with a sausage and egg McMuffin. So the only time you need the key on this bike is when you want to get into the into the tail. Ooh, now that's looking promising. That is looking promising. Another great feature of this bike is it's it's made for this. It actually comes with a. Let's have a look. You can get in there somehow. I was in there the other day. There we go. It actually comes with a hash brown carrier. It's very clever. It, it, they've thought of everything on this bike. They really have. If we were to get rid of the toolkit, I think we're in business. Expensive launch box. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think... Bingo. Shall we see what you get in the KTM toolkit? Is that for towing? What the hell's that for? Bottle opener. Is that a bottle opener? It looks like a bottle opener in case your clutch lever falls off. Uh, oh, So yeah, we've got the hash brown. We'll leave that for the message and flyer to find when he borrows this bike. <laughs> a lot of people will say, come on chops, get off the fence. Which bike is better? Which bike should I buy? The Super Duke or the Torono? That is so hard to answer. And it really does come down to personal preference. Something which may help, and something I realised after about a week on this bike, is think of this, as I've mentioned, as a big supermoto. If you like supermotos, you're going to love this. The Tuono is a sports bike without the fairing and high bars. These are very different bikes. People may think they're the same, you know, massive capacity nakeds. They're the same class. They're not really. The, the Tuono is a sports bike which is comfortable. If you love your sports bikes, but you want something more comfortable, 
then the Tuono is probably the bike for you. The Tuono is a fantastic road bike and I'm not knocking it. I'd love either one of these bikes, I really would. But I think for me, because I like supermotos, because I like the lazy way of riding, of using the torque, because I want to just poodle sometimes without feeling like I need to push on, I think the Super Duke suits me better. For me, it's, it's so close. It is so close. I see the benefits and the merits of both of them. And, uh, but I just think the Super Duke suits me and my style of riding better. When I first got on this, I was like, oh no, it's not as nice as a Tuono. But it's a grower, not a shower. Super Duke power, baby. Super Duke power. One thing I haven't tested and I'm a little bit gutted about is the launch control. I haven't had a chance to do the launch control. I was going to do it yesterday, but it was raining all day. I, you can't test launch control in the wet. I mean, that is, well, maybe that's the best test, but I wasn't willing to try that. And because the electronics, I've not really seen much of them. You need a lot of faith to try the launch control. And with the Tuono and the Aprilia, I would, I'd seen the electronics doing stuff since I was having the bike. I knew they were good. I'd seen the way it controlled the bike. And I had faith that the launch control would work as it should. But I haven't really seen much electronics on this, so I'm a little bit dubious about testing the launch. I'm sure it's absolutely fine. But <laughs> certainly in the wet and I haven't done it, basically. I've bottled it. I've not got big enough bollocks to test it on this. If I'd had it longer and had a few, not, you know, a bit... I'm making excuses. I haven't done it. I'm sorry. Oh, well, she's almost home. Oh, Juki. I'm going to miss you, Juki. Oh, my darling. We will meet again one day somehow you will be mine I would move heaven and earth to be together forever 